um, speaker. So our uh, next speaker is Michael De La Rosa. Um, he's working with Jorge. Um, so uh, Michael, um, can you share your screen? Good morning. Uh, yes, just give me one second. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, and again, we will warn you um, at the um, eight and 10 minute mark, um, please begin. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Michael. Um, I'm from the University of Texas at El Paso. <clears throat> and my presentation today is on the prediction of atomization energies using entropic data representation and machine learning. So a brief outline before I begin. Uh, first, I'll give you some background about, uh, first of all, the problem of data representation and then Gentropy, which is the solution to these problems, and some of the machine learning techniques that we, we ended up using, and then a comparison of the results of versus previous results. And then finally, a little bit of a discussion on those results. So first of all, the atomization energy is the energy it requires to take a molecule apart into its individual atoms. And this can be rather computationally expensive if we calculate this from first principles, so there have been efforts in the past to use um, machine learning algorithms to predict the atomization energies based off of positions and charges of atoms. So the positions and charges of atoms are encoded here within the Coulomb matrix. So as you can see from the definition, um, each element in the matrix depends on the nuclear charge of the atoms and the distance between both of the atoms. And this is just an example for ethene, a simple carbon-carbon double bond with four accompanying hydrogen molecules in it. So there are a couple of issues with the Coulomb matrix in this form. So first of all, the size of the matrix depends on how many atoms are present in the molecule. So if you look at it here, ethene is a six, molecule, six atom molecule, so it's a six by six matrix. So this means that it can vary depending on how many atoms you are, and it can make it a little bit difficult to compare different molecules of different sizes. So there's a, a rather straightforward solution to this by just introducing dummy atoms with no charge. So essentially, you just add zeros into the matrix to kind of standardize the size for all of the matrices. The other problem is a little bit more difficult to deal with, but it's that there's no well-defined ordering system for these matrices. So if we look back, so since ethene is a rather simple molecule, um, it's rather symmetrical, and then it, it exists in a 2D plane because of the carbon-carbon double bond here. It's rather simple and intuitive to represent it as something like this with the carbons in the middle and the hydrogens on the outside. But as you can imagine, as molecules get more and more complex and more atoms are added to it, it becomes um, just not feasible or rather impossible to do it as something as intuitive and simple as this. So in order to account for that, you're going to need to use different, um, or you're going to need to account for this or lack of an ordering system. So some of the previous solutions have been to use several randomly sorted matrices to represent one molecule, or to sort the matrices, or just to use an eigenspectrum representation. So we introduced a novel information entropy metric in order to solve uh, the ordering system and the lack of um, size similarities. So we call this Gentropy, and it is the information entropy of a mathematical graph, which we invented. And as you can see in this definition, the probability of this is the occupation probability of a node. And the occupation probability is based on how many edges are connected to a single node and the weights of those connections based off of or in relative to all of the uh, edges in the whole graph itself and their weights. And it's essentially the probability of occupying one of these nodes. So we can use Gentropy as a form of data representation uh, for regression problems that involve graphs. So in order to use Gentropy for a data, rep data representation in um, a molecule, we need to create a mathematical graph off of the molecule. And to do this, we use the Coulomb matrix as an adjacency matrix. And then we create a complete graph, kind of like you see here in this image, where all of the nodes are connected to each other. And instead of the connections being based off of bonds, uh, they're based off of, uh, since it's coming from the Coulomb matrix, they're based off of the atomic charge, um, the nuclear charges of each of the atoms and the distance between each of those two atoms. So once we generate a graph like this, 
we can find um, both the total gentropy and then the gentropy per atom, which is what we'll be using for um, the input data for the machine learning techniques. And then as a result of um, it coming from the graph, it's unaffected by the ordering or the size of the matrix. So it does account for the problems. So the data set that we used is called the QM7 data set, which has around 7,000 organic molecules of up to about 23 atoms. And each of these has atoms of, um, it's composed of atoms of carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur, and hydrogen. So for each of these molecules, it has the Coulomb matrix, coordinates and charges of each atom and the atomization energies of the molecule. So some of the techniques that we used were stochastic gradient descent, k nearest neighbors, uh, neural networks, uh, specifically a multi-layer perceptron with two layers in it, and kernel ridge regression using a Laplacian kernel. So the methods were to uh, first separate 90% of the data for just the training algorithms to use, um, or randomly selected as well. And then we would train the machine learning techniques on that data, and then uh, end it by testing on the remaining 10%. And then afterwards, we would optimize our um, algorithms by conducting a grid search. So we would essentially choose a range of the um, parameters of each of these models and use the one with the minimum for the root mean square error and mean absolute error. <clears throat> so one of the better performing uh, methods was K nearest neighbors. And it was uh, computation, the most cost-effective method tested. And it did have the largest improvement using the gentropy per atom in comparison to the other mechanisms that I mentioned earlier. And as you can see here, it's a little bit of the optimization. Uh, comparing with mean absolute error and root mean error versus the neighbors. And you can see at three for both of these, three nearest neighbors seems to be the most effective. So uh, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of K nearest neighbors and neural network. So as we can see in this graph, uh, we have a given gentropy of the molecule, and then we have both the predicted atomization energy based off of the algorithm and the actual atomization energy that is present there. And you can see they both perform quite similarly, um, except uh, some of the L layers here have a little bit of a problem here. So next is just a comparison of the results. So on the left hand side is uh, using the gentropy, which is the calculations that we conducted. And then on, on the right hand side is um, from previous calculations using the methods I mentioned earlier. So sorted the matrices using several random matrices uh, to represent one molecule and the eigenspectrum representation. So when we go from the total gentropy to the gentropy per atom, we see that there is an improvement in um, or reduction in the errors for each of these. And we see in particular, the some of the better performing ones are k nearest neighbors, uh, neural network, and kernel ridge regression. So we see that these three um, at the end, especially for the gentropy per atom, perform similarly at essentially the same level. But if we look at k nearest neighbors in particular, we see that uh, there is quite a significant improvement versus the other sorting matrices or the other representations. We see even in the total gentropy, the less effective method, we outperform both the sorted matrices and eigenspectrum representations. And using the gentropy per atom, there is quite a significant improvement um, between both of those two. Although we do see neural network and kernel ridge regression aren't quite as effective as these other sorting mechanisms. So as we can see from this, uh, gentropy is a novel method of uh, data representation, and it does improve on some of the limitations of the Coulomb matrix in this form. And in particular, it seems to be more useful for the basic methods of machine learning, such as k nearest neighbors. As you can see, it significantly did outperform the other methods of data representation, although it does seem less effective for some of the more complex methods, such as neural networks, uh, although there is some room for optimization in those um, instances. So in the future, uh, we could perhaps conduct a more comprehensive overview of Gentropy's performance perhaps using other machine learning algorithms and uh, more complex neural networks and further optimization with them. 
Uh, and alternatively, we could also apply Gentropy to other machine learning tasks rather than just regression based off of the um, Coulomb matrix itself. And we could do something, for example, unsupervised learning, such as the clustering of data uh, based off of a given um, Gentropy value that we can calculate from them. So um, this uh, concludes my presentation. Uh, I would like to thank my uh, co-author, Dr. Jorge Munoz, and um, the audience for listening. Okay, thank you very much for a great talk. Let's see how we are doing on the um, questions and answers. Okay, so we have two um, questions for you. Um, so one is, can you comment on the ISO gentropy surfaces at varying occupation of the sites? Is there a feeling on what configurations map onto the same value of gentropy? Hmm. Um, well, it seems that uh, the gentropy is kind of um, based a lot off of uh, similar, I suppose, uh, using the similar atoms and everything. So if we go back to here, um, so as you can see, like the carbon is the one that has like the um, the largest uh, uh, values in the Coulomb matrix, and uh, accordingly, it would have uh, one of the more significant um, gentropy values. So we can see uh, some of the similar ones. Um, you would end up with similar gentropies for molecules that are similar to each other and have uh, come are composed of perhaps similar. Um, similar atoms, essentially. So perhaps if there were, are like isomers uh, together, uh, they, they would be some of the ones who have similar gentropies. And they get more further as you have uh, different atoms, such as um, ones with sulfur, which are kind of, the, since sulfur is the significantly heavier than any other molecule used here. Um, so um, items, or rather molecules containing sulfur would have uh, similar, or rather a lot, a lot different um, gentropy values. Okay, and so we have a, another question for you. Um, let's see, we're doing, okay. okay, so I think the other question we'll, we'll have to get to on, um, on Slack. So I'll um, thank you again, um, good talk. Um, again, thank I'll you. post the other question on Slack. If you can stop sharing, then we'll go on to our um, next um, speaker. So for the next um, speaker is Dr.